Good morning, folks. We're going to hit the top events around the world, top science news from yesterday, and each of the three movie topics from our August trifecta. But we're starting with the sun over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star began quietly, and after what was indeed literally years of waiting, an active region fired a CME. Watch center disk. Now this is key today. The tiny CME visible on the Iswa Enlo spiral is not real. It was there before the eruption, it was a model fail based on EUV brightness, and indeed, Noah's Enlo spiral, which is way better of a model, showed nothing. But irony is our star's mistress, and so she delivered one this morning. Folks, if there had actually been any sunspots beneath those bright fields, it would have been much larger, an indication of what's to come in the next few years when the sunspots return. The CME erupted northward. It may enter some plasma into an Earth-directed stream, but folks, this is weak, no concern, and it may actually miss our planet entirely. The solar wind continues calming. Purple speed has actually dropped into anemic range below 300 kilometers per second. Geomagnetic conditions, cool and calm. Let's go to the Philippines, where satellites have shown no further emissions. While the Tal volcano was going off, local officials said that pressure was building for an even larger eruption, and I really hope they were wrong because it's now been two days of that building when they said the bigger one was hours away. Hopefully this pristine return remains. Meanwhile, now is the winter of the Middle Easterners' discontent. Snow, freezing cold, and avalanches have killed more than 100 people. I won't show the shots, but all the kids in the news photos are in shorts. Let's come to the analysis portion where the Puerto Rico 6.4 earthquake has been mapped using ground motion remote sensing. About five and a half inches of motion in the red region towards the southeast and down in elevation. These scientists have a question about whether geoengineering will be able to help. I'm just going to cut them off right there. No. Up next, we're going to test to locate slight motions of other stars they say were part of a great ancient collision of the Milky Way. We'll forget for a moment that having even 1% of stars in hyperbolic or unbound orbits debunks the galactic rotation problem and need for dark matter, and just see here how there are numerous pathways stars are taking around the galactic center. Basically these, and everything in between. The first of those trifecta movie-related stories hits the climate. They're going to have to take how much methane they think is coming out of the Arctic and basically cut it in half. There is an incredible halting of the release when cold water conditions emerge at the deep, locking up many of the methane flares and slow releases. That's not only going to affect the human attribution portion of the models, given that 60% of global warming is confined to the Arctic Circle, but also the forecasts of future warming. Take them down, big guys. Nova up next, and they have spotted four of what they call dwarf nova. Now, they say these are accretion disk brightenings, which only half makes sense, and further has no direct observation. They guess it's the disk because these nova are so small. In fact, many come in around 10 to the 31 ergs of power, which is even smaller than the Carrington event solar flare of 1859, the 1957 blast, and probably a few more the sun releases every other cycle or so. From dwarf nova to hypernova, we cover a 100 trillion x difference in power, which again, goes past the range of solar flares we know of. Not only is it key to know that there are both super and micro versions of Nova, but there is tremendous evidence that our Sun is an extremely long period recurrent micro Nova. That's what the Cosmic Disaster movie is about, and it's linked for you below. Last but not least is cosmology. This relatively unassuming image is the work product of SLAC, National Lab at Stanford. The yellow spots are regions where they've discovered tons of matter they can't see. It corresponds with the red regions if you've seen that sky map, and essentially the big fight is whether they can spot dust and plasma at such distances, meaning they are looking for something else, or whether they are merely imagining magic particles and their ability to see at godlike levels, color me dubious, just doesn't exist, with the dusty plasma doing all the work. Folks, the climate, catastrophe, and cosmology movies are linked for you below. They are basically prerequisites for understanding these daily morning shows. Website membership gives you 50 podcasts and 100 video episodes every year. It gives me the ability to put these news shows out for free on YouTube, and it will take your understanding to the next level. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.